Okay, scholars, let's take a look at ecological succession. You should be reading these pages associated in your textbook as well. What is it? It's the process of recovery for an ecosystem that has lost all vegetation and possibly soil due to a disturbance. Primary succession is when you lose both the vegetation and the soil it was growing in. And this can follow disturbances such as volcanic lava flow on the left and uh, glacial retreat on the right that leave behind no plants or soil. Notice the new growth on the bare rock. So this is all bare rock. We're starting to get some new growth here, amazingly. And here we're also getting new growth on what was basically um, very, very minimal, if any, soil left behind by this retreating glacier that's retreating backwards. The first species to come in are called the pioneer species. And this is happening during primary succession, where there is no soil, just rock. So the, a common pioneer species is lichen, a mutualistic relationship between fungus and algae. The algae provides food, sugars, through photosynthesis, and in turn the fungus provides a habitat for the algae and moisture for it. And together they help break down the rock into soil matter for later plants. And that's a long process because um, it's the soil is coming from the decomposition of the lichen itself and, uh, and just the decomposing rock. Rock that's decomposing due to maybe acids that are being secreted by the lichen and things like that. And so the minerals of this rock can go into minerals for the evolving soil. Let's take a look at secondary succession. This is when only the vegetation is lost. The soil remains. Fire is a good example of a disturbance that um, would precede secondary succession. So here we see the trunks of these trees charred from a fire. And a little while longer, we're starting to get new growth. Seeds, um, species with good seed dispersion are important during the early stages of succession so the plant population can spread. Here is me uh, a while ago with my then three-year-old daughter, who's now 12, in Santa Barbara. This is in, the, um, in an area not too far from my home where there is a wildfire. You can see rock left behind, and you can see little tiny uh, seedlings starting to grow, little sprouts. Secondary succession can also occur in an abandoned farm field. This would have been at one point uh, you would have seen soil with crops growing out of it, but then it was abandoned. So what kind of um, what kind of species come in? First, we get small plants, grasses. Over time, we get larger plants, as you can see here, some shrubs. And over a longer period of time, uh, about maybe um, a few more decades, we're getting full forest climax community, where we have large trees and small trees and everything in between. There's some general patterns with this. If you look at this diagram, we got time on the horizontal axis. First, we get grasses, herbs, and forbs coming in, things that are very good at growing without, um, without needing a lot of resources, species that have a good ability to spread their seeds so that they can um, spread and cover the area easily. Over time, we get larger shrubs and seedlings. Now we say seedlings, we're starting to get seedlings growing that eventually become these large trees, oaks and hardwoods. So over time, we see the size of the um, trees evolving. And um, it's important that we have these grasses come in, which are a little bit more hardy than, say, a seedling from one of these trees, which might depend on the shelter provided by some of these smaller shrubs. So these smaller shrubs and grasses are sort of um, creating an environment in which young seedlings can then grow and eventually prosper into full trees. Uh, secondary succession also happens with dunes. Here we see grass or other plants um, in sandy soil. If there was a large storm, it would wash away both the soil or the sand and the vegetation. These sand dunes are continually formed along sandy shores due to wind and other factors, but they are also continually destroyed by storms and then reformed. So after a dune reforms, um, in terms of the sand being there, then you have um, grasses are the first to become established. Their grass runners or shoots stabilize the dunes. So um, you have shoots coming out here. They can start to form a network that can help stabilize the sand, keeping it from eroding away. Other species seeds may then become trapped and germinate, um, trapped in, this, in the, um, the mat of these uh, grass runners. 
and then they become established as new plants. Let's take another, let's take a different look at something called a bog. A bog is an open body of water with surface inlets but no surface outlets. So you can think of it like a big puddle that's not going to drain on its own. Well, not going to drain, but it will fill up over time. So succession here begins with sedges, which are grass-like plants, putting out floating runners. We can see these floating runners along the edge here. And then wind can blow particles into the mat of runners. These particles become um, bits of the soil. They might be organic matter. It could be bits of wood or things like that. Seeds that land on top don't sink in the water. Therefore, they stay and they can germinate. And the mat becomes thicker, and shrubs and trees begin to grow. You can see a stylized diagram of this. Here's our bog, open water, aquatic plants growing in from the side. And um, the bog fills in. Um, yeah, in addition to these um, plants growing more on the surface, the bog is also filling in from the bottom. Because as you have more um, growth along the top in the form of algae, microbes, plants, and zooplankton, small, almost microscopic animal species, you are going to get sediment. As they die, their organic matter is going to sink. And, um, and that's going to build up over time until eventually the overlaying uh, growth and the sediment from that decaying growth are going to fill up the bog. So we have a succession here where we went from having a large pond to soil with nutrients on top. And if you weren't, if you didn't have a trained eye, you might not even know that there was ever a bog there in the first place. So we've seen here the difference between primary succession, where you have to replace the soil and the plants, and secondary succession, where you only have to replace the plants. We've seen some specific examples of that with forest fires as secondary succession, or in dunes as primary succession, or as bogs as secondary succession. So make sure you read the assigned pages from the book, and we're going to do some more um, investigation of this tomorrow. Okay, scholars, thank you for tuning in.